Oh dear, all this I wasn't filming it. Now what is this you might wonder? I'm showing you, you this up close. And you might think I'm in the side of a cave or something like that. But you would be mistaken if that's what you think. Because I'm in kind of a barn. And I'm looking at this work that this one man has done and filled his yard with. And I have to keep backing up in order to get all of this in. But there you go. Now you can see. And you switch right over here. And here's one in the round. See? I'll go up in on that. I almost see a face in there. And many, many more things I see here. Spirals. X's. Another big round one. You know what it reminds me of, Susan? Planets in their forma formative years when they were getting all their elements together may have looked like this. This way. But I sure want to get this one in right here. This is my favorite of all shapes. I use it a lot in the things I make with wire. These, you have to see them and walk around them as you see them. So this is his house, Yo Johann's house, a very small house compared to the size of all of the uh, structures that are housing all of his creations and his wife's creations. And uh, even in his house he has it showcased with a lot of her artwork. And uh, I want to read you about the great move here. These shipments originated in Iceland and Orlando, Florida, with its final desti destination about 15 miles west of Johnson City on Highway 290 to what promises to be another cultural stronghold for the area. At 80 years of age, Eiffels purchased a ranch in the Texas Hill Country, sight unseen and began in the process of moving a lifetime inventory of his sculptures and the paintings and sculptures of his wife, Kristen Eiffels. For five months, 18 trucks transported sculptures of cast and dripped metals, wood, concrete, and bronze that originated in Iceland, England, Rotterdam, and Florida. Front-end loaders and a 94-foot crane deposited them 
on his ranch located between Johnson City and Fredericksburg in Central Texas. Here the Eiffels and Eiffels Foundation will feature receptual art in large museum quality buildings and on the surrounding sculpture grounds. Anyway, there's a website where you can see the move, the move can be viewed on the website and it's entitled www.eiffelsandeiffels.com and Eiffels is spelled E-Y-F-E-L-L-S eiffelsandeiffels.com in case you want to look that up. Anyway, it was a very interesting day, a beautiful day. The weather was perfect, the sky was pretty and blue with little patchy clouds here and there and it was so fun to go to the to the wildflower farm and look around at all the things they had there, sample all the goodies they had to sample, and eat their biscuits that you got to sample their, their jellies with these biscuits that they gave you. And it was just a really good time. I enjoyed being inside the little enclosure that had the butterflies all flying around and looking so beautiful. And we managed to take many, many pictures of butterflies on flowers while we were in there. I can just imagine when he made these things he must have had to climb on scalpels or something just to get to the top of these. I would love to have seen him making them. That would have been a very interesting thing to see. They are so large. I like this one right here. This one you can see from the road real easily. And these next ones, these bone looking ones, are the ones his wife had done. They look like some kind of animal, but don't ask me what kind of, an of animal they look like because I can't tell. I thought at first maybe a dinosaur, but no. They don't really look like a dinosaur. Something else. <laughs> don't ask me what. But they are interesting. You have to give them that. <laughs> and all this is a metal. This, these are heavy, heavy things. At first I thought, they were real bones. <laughs> but then I thought, well, that would be awfully big bones. What would they be from? But they were just bone shapes, is what he told me. Not real bones. This one looks like looking down from uh, the air at the, at the ground at mountains and lakes and things. And here's one that looks like a pyramid. It has a little tree growing in there. It's real neat. I like that pyramid one. That's another view of it. I asked him when I was talking to him, had he uh, ever been, when he was in Florida, to see the uh, Coral Castle. And oh yes, he had. He had been there. And he might have had some of the knowledge of how to lift things that are heavy because these aren't just little objects. And he said it's a lot about the balancing of something heavy. But that just doesn't do it for me. I don't see how you can move something heavy because you know how to balance it because you would still have to lift it somehow to get it in a certain place of balance. There were these kind of critters all over the place. <laughs> I have to call them critters because I don't know what else to call them. But I like the geometry of his work. It's like he was working with some of the same forms that I like to work with when I'm working with my wire and making geometric forms. I like this one. It has a lot of, uh, I guess that's bronze in there giving it color. This is, it's, it's a spiral, if you, if you notice, it spirals around. This was interesting right here, this one. And there I end it with my favorite one, the diamond shape that I love so well. This is the Dove Lady, over and out. <laughs>